this out on a decap. All right, for you guys out there, it, you know, obviously the audience is a mixture of guys and, and women. For you guys out there, here's a line for you. If you see a, a pretty girl and you want to get to know her, you walk up and uh, get up to her and say, if I told you you had a beautiful body, would you hold it against me? But um bum It's doing that thing again, I guess. Not enough light in here. I got the light on. I mean, if I open up the curtain, remember, then it it's like this blurring too much light. So, sorry. Sorry about the pulsing. I'm throbbing while I'm speaking to you. I know, that excites you. March 22nd. If you are sure you are right, you need not worry what the world thinks. Well, that's true. That pretty much just summed up my entire life. Okay, class, we're done. We're done for the day. I'm right. So there. Okay. Uh, if you are ever to achieve noteworthy success, not just success, but noteworthy success in your life, you must be willing to stand apart from the crowd. Here we go. This is this is the paragraph I've been waiting for. Two hundred and seventy something friggin' days, and we're finally getting to some some meat here. This is this is my mantra right here. I mean, he, this is it. This is the shit right here, guys. Uh, must stand apart from the crowd. Success is something that is achieved by the minority, not the majority. That's true. That's very true. Very small percentage of people. Okay, not the majority, comma, of people. You will also discover as you climb the ladder of success that there are many who, out of jealousy or envy, will belittle your achievements. Whew, he is firing on all cylinders today. Nevertheless, if you have the courage of your convictions, nothing can deter you from your course. You develop confidence in your beliefs by doing your own thinking and by constantly testing and revising your knowledge. It's true. Use W. Clement Stone's R squared, A squared principle, okay, this is new to me, <laughs> um, to recognize and relate, assimilate and apply. Okay, so R squared is recognize and relate. A squared is assimilate and apply information from any field to help solve your problems and direct your thinking. Now, uh, God bless you, Napoleon. I mean, this is, honestly, this is the type of content that I, I love and, and this is these are the type of nuggets I'm looking to read myself and share with you guys so this is fucking awesome um, never heard that before recognize and relate assimilate and apply information from any field so once again the concepts that make you successful make you successful in whatever field you're in so some people look at this channel and go well, I don't do real estate. I don't flip houses. I can't relate. You, you relate it to what you know. Any new information that you learn, you know, from the time you're five years old, and any information you learn, you relate to your knowledge base, right? You, you relate to the way you learn it and understand it is to relate it to something you already know. Why did I say five years old? Well, it's a fact. There's another nugget for you. From zero to five, we learn more than we learn the rest of our lives combined, right? You can live to 80 years old, and in those 75 years from five to 80, you're not learning as much as you learn from zero to five. And think about it. At zero, you're starting with no knowledge. Your knowledge base is empty. So, you know, there's a thing called a stove. There's a thing called a kitchen, and the stove in the kitchen is hot. You learn that between zero and five. Once you know that, you know that you can't relearn that. You didn't learn that there's a thing called a stove at 13. You might have learned how to cook at 13 or how to boil water or make pasta or make toast or whatever, but you learned about the stove in the kitchen and hot and don't touch and what those words mean, what don't means, what no means, what touch means. I mean, all those things you learned from zero to five. So, or most, most of us did. <laughs> Some of us are still learning, but I digress. Um, so... Yeah, I mean, that. the point is, once from that point on, right, now everything new that comes in, you learn in relation to that data that's already in your brain, right? Does that, does that make sense? That's how you learn. Whether you realize that's how you learn or not, that's how you learn. So recognize and relate. Relate to what you already know. Assimilate. 
bring it in, absorb it. Um, I talked about Jimi Hendrix the other day and what a great mind he had and, and how he was a pioneer, you know, in making sounds with the guitar, you know, with his playing style and how every hack in the world can uh, download a tab, tablature, which says, you know, press the third fret on the third string. I mean, any idiot can do that, even me. Well, I'm a big dummy and I can, I can like follow a chart and say, take the third finger and press it down on the guitar. O okay, I can handle that. <laughs> play a G chord. Once again, once I learn a G chord and Jimmy says play a G chord because that's what he wrote on the, in this beautiful song, I can play a G chord. Could I have come up with a chord progression? No, probably not. But once he came up with it, I can play it, right? It's simple. We assimilate. We bring it into our own you know, playing. Not, not, once again, not as well as him, but <laughs> I can play the song and apply. Yeah, that's the, the there, there is that. You got to use it, right? <laughs> Information from any field. This is fucking gold, guys. This is like, I'm so excited <laughs> reading this paragraph. And not only, not only did he drop a nugget, but he dropped like 20 nuggets in here, right? So if you're sure you are right, and that's not being egotistical, or overconfident or any of those you know ugly things it's you're just you know you better than anybody else i know me better than, than any of you know me right even my friends who are watching this channel because they're my friends don't know exactly what makes me tick or exactly how i think they have an idea uh, based upon how long they've known me and, and how much time they've spent around me, but they really don't know, and, and vice versa. I, th I have an idea of the person. I, when I think of one of my friends, I, th I think of certain characteristics that they've shown to me over the years. Um, but I still don't know 100% of everything that goes on in their brain, right? And I, and I never will. So you know you best, Being uh, knowing that, <laughs> you're going to get the knowledge. You're going to watch YouTube videos, read books, whatever it is, how to talk to other people, network, learn from their experiences, right? Get mentors, coaches, whatever you're going to do to learn, you're going to learn. Now you've got this accumulation of knowledge and based on that knowledge and based on your values, right? Your ethics and your values, you're going to go ahead and take action because that's what we've been you know, preaching and teaching this whole time. When you take that action, there are going to be people who don't understand it. And the reason they don't understand it, and he alludes to it in here, um, success is something that's achieved by the minority, not the majority. So when you go out and quit your job and start wholesaling or flipping houses or become a landlord, you are absolutely the minority. Most people want to do that or think they want to do that, but don't have the stones to do it. You had the stones to do it, and that's men and women, you know. <laughs> I'm using stones as guts more than balls, but whatever. It's the point is, very few people have the courage to do it, and you do. If if you do it, you do, and that's kind of the whole point of reading these things, is to get you to get the courage to help you find the courage that's already inside you and bring it out, right? So you can do it too and be a success and. My dream was to retire. Uh, I retired four years early. My dream was to retire to Italy, have an agro-tourism business. Instead, I'm in Thailand flipping cars, but I'm, the point is I'm not grinding. I'm not in the rat race anymore. I'm not doing the daily grind and hustle over there. I'm doing a little bit of a grind. <laughs> I'm getting started, right? But going to the auction and buying a vehicle and then selling it you know, on Facebook Marketplace, is not digging ditches <laughs> you know what i mean and and when i make the money from this enterprise like it spends so powerfully here um i saw another uh, guy on youtube the other day i was watching an interview with, between two youtubers actually um, pretty good there's a guy here in chiang mai who has a channel there's plenty of guys in chiang mai who have a channel but there's one that i i watch not on the regular but I, i've seen probably 10 or 12 of his videos they're, they're pretty good and um he was interviewing another youtube guy and the guy said uh i have figured out that my money spends three times as far here as it does in the u.s so exactly like i've been talking about with my 10 to 1 uh 1000 bots spending like a hundred dollars 
So it's worth $30 on the exchange. That's roughly three to one. He and I have come to the same conclusion. We state it differently, but it's, it's about the same. He's saying $30 spends like $90 here, three to one. I'm saying $30 spends like 100. Okay, give or take. I mean, it's close. It's right in that neighborhood. So when you make $30 here, you know, which is lunch <laughs> in the United States, it, it, like a thousand bot buys you ninety to a hundred dollars worth of shit, right? So it's powerful, right? It's multiplying your spending power. So can you earn a hundred dollars here easily? Not as easily as you can earn a hundred in the states. So the key to this whole thing, and here's here's a good if you're watching this channel because you're thinking about coming to Thailand. This is for you. We're 10 minutes in, so half of you have tuned out because average viewer watches one or two minutes on YouTube videos. So the ones who hung in there and are watching the thing to the end because they want to learn, like I used to watch every video to the end, the end when I was learning about Thailand back in August of 2019. Here's the deal. You want to earn in the U.S. and spend here. Earn the 100 bucks there. Spend the 100 here where it spends like 300 or more like i said i'm i think it's a little bit higher than three to one a bit but whatever you just use three to one that's a good easy ratio in your head so a hundred dollars earned there is like three hundred dollars there better yet get a rental in the u.s you know robert kiyosaki get a rental right real estate invest get a rental and that kicks off a thousand u.s a month that's easy that's not hard to get a thousand a month off a rental i have a crappy little house and a in a C to D neighborhood, blue collar, working class neighborhood, not Ponte Vedra. Um, Marietta Paxson, for, for those of you who lives in, in Jacksonville, Florida, 32254. This is it. Not a great area. Small, three bedroom, one bath house, which is a killer. Normally you need two baths for, you know, rent to families and stuff. Three bedroom, one bath, 1,100 square feet. So it is not a fucking Taj Mahal. I paid eleven thousand dollars for it, and I put another eleven in it, so I'm into it for twenty-two grand. Cheap, 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 right? <coughs> That's going to throw off minimum nine hundred dollars a month. I'm shooting for a thousand nine fifty, but even if I get nine hundred a month, that's twenty-seven thousand baht here. Twenty-seven thousand baht, and you can get the Taj Mahal. <laughs> you can get a private villa. 3,000 square feet with a private pool, uh, gate, parking, covered parking, western kitchen. Like you can live very nicely for 27,000 baht a month here. So it's a, you see the direct, you know, the difference between the, the, the value and the quality. I would not live in that house in 32254 ever. I would gladly live in one of these McMansions with the private pool. That's what I was going to live in when I first moved here. So making money over there, spending it here. That's that's the key, guys. That's the whole deal. That's what you want to start to set up. Get residual income coming in. Oh, by the way, I talked about the 800,000 bot, about $26,000 that you need to put in the bank for um, three months a year for your retirement visa, fat guy visa, I call it, fat and 50, right? You got to be over 50. Got to have 800,000 bot in the bank. Or you can show 65,000 bot about $2,200 a month income. So you get yourself three rentals that kick off a thousand bot, a thousand a thousand dollars a month, and, and it adds up to more than $2,200. You're good. You don't need to, to park the twenty-six grand in the bank for three months. And some people just do it for a year. Some some guys are like, fuck it, I don't care. They put the twenty-six grand and they just leave it in the bank and they never touch that account. You're losing the use of that money for a year. It's nuts. Better to have the 2200 income. In fact, probably that's what I'm going to do this year, switch over from the 800, you know, leaving it in the bank to the 2200, the 65,000 baht income. It just makes more sense, right? Um, so, yeah, you're not the, the majority. You're in the minority, which is important to remember. And then you, you want to be that way. You really do. Uh, as you climb the ladder, many who out of jealousy or envy, right? So... Angie, Angie McKee, uh, she was a property manager, go-getter, hustler, um, you know, there's, there's plenty of property managers out there, but I was impressed with her. Uh, I met her when I was broker at one realty and she was working for another broker. Well, she was looking for a change 
you know, sometimes people are just ready to, to move on and go to a, you know, a different route. And I wanted to get into property management, so I made her an offer. I said, I want to start a property management company, leverage my contacts, leverage the 40 plus agents we had, you know, for referrals. And um, I'd like you to head it up. I want you to be partners with me. And she had always wanted to, to, to have her own property management company. You know, when you're an employee, you look at the boss and say, you're an asshole and there's so many things I could do better. I think every employee does that. And a lot of times they're right. <laughs> so, um, you know, Angie had some definite ideas. They were good ideas. And I took some money that I had from flipping and invested it into the one uh, realty property management uh, corporate company. And um, one of the first things I told her, um, oh, she had, so she, she came over and there was an issue with another agent uh, talking about Angie's uh, personal life. And the agent went so far as to send me an email saying, just so you know what you're getting with Angie, blah, 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 blah. Yeah. The, the majority, right? That agent was the majority and she had the wrong mindset. So Angie was upset, you know, nobody likes people talking shit about them. <laughs> and uh, I called the broker because the lady worked for a pretty big firm, you know, one of the national firms. And I said, uh, I'm not sure this represents what your firm stands for. Um, you know, could you maybe talk to her? And yeah, it ended right there. The woman stopped harassing Angie and stopped sending personal emails to friends and stuff and just, you know, was talking to from her broker and she shut the fuck up like she should have in the first place. And Angie was upset, you know, once again, understandably, nobody likes to have shit talked about them. And I sat her down in the office and, and I said, Angie, I went crabbing one time with some friends up in New Jersey. Uh, Joe Mack, the guy who told me, wait four seasons, before, you know, to know a person before you marry them. Same guy, Joe Mack and, and another friend of ours. Uh, who had a boat and we went crabbing and it was fucking awesome and we caught a shitload of crabs and we filled the bucket up and I asked uh, I think his name was Bill um, the guy who had the boat hey why don't why don't you put a lid on the bucket you know we got 20 friggin crabs in there aren't they gonna climb out he's like no every time a crab tries to climb out off the top the others pull them back down I'm like damn so that agent who was talking shit about Angie was one of those crabs trying to pull her back down. Here she was about to have her own company and the agent was like, no, no, you can't do that. Come here, come here. You're this, you're that, you know, calling her names and stuff. And it's like, you're so fucking pathetic <laughs> reaching up there trying to pull her down. How about you pull yourself up? Oh no, that's scary. That's too much work. That's, you know, that agent was small you understand she's a tiny little insignificant piece of shit hanging off the hairs of your ass oh how could you say that about a person because that's her behavior i'm observing her behavior and i'm observing her mindset and i find it lacking okay <laughs> here's somebody trying to lift themselves up and achieve and sure enough there's the fucking crab pulling her down get back down here in the bucket with us so i told angie that and it hit home with her and she's like I got it. Okay, cool. I, I understand it now. It, I'm not any but happier about this girl talking shit about me, but I understand now why she's doing it. And, and we went on to build a, a really good company. Then I moved to Thailand. <laughs> so uh, I sold the company and Angie is working for the guy who bought the company from me. And she's happier than ever. Uh, and in fact, she wrote on Facebook... I'm no longer in the bucket or I climbed out of the bucket or something like that. I'm like, you go girl. She gets it. She gets it. So about the jealousy and envy, you'll see that that's a real thing. And you will see that. That's why I like this paragraph so much, guys. It, it is dead on. It, everything you need is in here. They'll belittle your achievements. Nevertheless, if you have the courage of your conditions, nothing can deter you from this course. How many times have I said, I don't give a shit what other people think of me? I don't. I honestly fucking don't. I don't know if you believe it or not. I, I don't care whether you believe it or not. It's the truth. And that is so freeing not to get all tangled up in the little petty bullshit like that agent was pulling. It just, you know... <laughs> Go back to when you were a kid. I'm rubber, you're glue. What you say bounces off me and sticks to you, <laughs> right? That's a fucking second grade or kindergarten. It's true. I don't fucking care what people think about me. And 
if you listen to my boy Napoleon, that's how you've got to train your mind to to feel to think also you've got to let that stuff bounce off you consider the source there are crab in the bucket and don't let them pull you down you know angie didn't she she got out of the fucking bucket and it's good out of the bucket you're not all crowded and <laughs> people claws up your ass and shit it's like ah, i'm free i'm not in the bucket anymore i'm free right so Dude nailed it today. He fucking nailed it. Uh, I I would say out of all the ones I've read so far, that's the most important one. It can it's got everything you need, guys. That's the blueprint. Do what he says. Don't give a shit. And trust yourself after you get the knowledge. Don't worry about what other people say. You gotta understand you're you're not a pioneer because others have gone before you, but you're on a path that most people don't take. And um, for various reasons. And you hadn't taken that path before for various reasons. All good. Put the blinders on, focus, and just shoot down that path. And you'll, you'll find what you're looking for.